Thank you. Stop. Yeah, the elephant in the room. I was, I was the first one I'm there. Yeah, which is obviously a head-on-head collision, and then there's a bit of the skin, soft skin, just probably peeled apart. So, yeah, it's just a quick stitch-up job, and then yeah, it should be fine in a couple of days. So, that's the best part. Oh, are you after, after the collision all good? Yeah, 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 the collision was fine. It's more of just like a the shock factor of just seeing the blood. Probably, other than that, it, it was all fine, pain-free. So that's the main part. Just sum up the excitement and then in in your first World Cup squad, it's an incredible achievement, must be incredibly excited. Yeah, I think the the excitement probably hasn't fully hit me yet because still a, all the messages coming from everyone congratulating me and obviously this morning with the, the call and watching a YouTube video and all that stuff probably hasn't kind of soaked in yet, but the emotions were definitely there when I was watching the video, still probably nervous because we didn't get a kind of briefing that we were in it or not. So the video was kind of that final. We were actually in the squad before we actually officially knew. So the whole day is probably one that I probably won't forget being a kid and watching the World Cup to then actually being part of it. It's a, an amazing occasion for me. Where did you watch the video? I, uh, I watched it in my own house by myself because I was kind of just, I was, I was up at about 8.30 pacing around the house, probably just trying to, kill a few hours because I was watching the time and it just wasn't going quick enough but yeah I just watched it in my lounge and just sat there and then enjoyed it. Yeah. There's, there's a young flavour to this squad and a lot of comparisons have been drawn to 2011 when a lot of new players came in. What, what's the atmosphere been like over the last few months in camp? It's been a tough year but there are a lot of new faces knocking around the place so it feels like there's a bit of a freshness to it. Yeah so definitely we, we, we definitely got a young squad and that's that's just part of the development kind of process just learning from game to game every game is going to be different as you see in international level um, but I think the last probably 14, 15 weeks I think especially spending time with a, a fresh squad a new squad it can it can have its like tips and turns but the group of boys we have now is amazing and throughout the whole kind of even Switzerland, Turkey we've all been a, a tight knit bunch we've all got closer and closer even though the weeks have been tough and we've been putting pressure on ourselves and testing ourselves throughout the week. It's, I think being with the group of boys we have been, I don't think it could have been easier because I think we all got each other through it. We were all with each other every step of the way. So it's been a good kind of 14 weeks together and definitely a good bunch of boys. Yeah, got a few caps obviously in the belt now, but the World Cup will be different. It will feel different. The emotions might be a little bit heightened. Have you given much thought to what you might be feeling and thinking in the moments before you can... Um, I think it's every occasion I there's, an, there's emotion behind every occasion because every time you put the jersey on it's a it's a prime moment no matter what game it is what occasion so I think that's how I kind of take the moments whenever I'm putting the jersey on is every moment's a special moment so I don't think I think about it's the World Cup so I'm going to get on top of myself or something like that it's more of the you're putting that um, jersey on to represent your country so make sure you just go out there and enjoy it as much as possible starting from me we've got co-captains for, for this tournament there's players has that been discussed much before this announcement and, and do you know as, as a playing group how this is going to work that they do it uh, well personally I, I wouldn't know too much about the that kind of side of it but I know that both of them have, as leaders obviously we play 20s together so both of them as leaders even though they are younger that they can they push the squad no matter what they're they're driven, they're, they're hard work and I think in a squad where you're kind of pushing to get that kind of to that level where you want to be winning games you need those kind of people to kind of push everyone with them instead of just them trying to push on themselves so I think they're definitely two key players and very uh, special to have them as captains Just, quickly, sorry, you... just describe the two of them, are they like similar people or are they a little bit different in certain ways? Uh, yeah, well I think it's like uh, I say Jack's more timid but he still gets his point across and he's still that, got that passion and then Darry's more that rough and tumble and more aggression behind him but so I think they kind of level each other out it's not it's like bad cop good cop but in in the end of it they both uh, merge very well Rio well then um, Rio you've watched on your own have you seen your actually family uh, to the news yeah yeah I, well so obviously I have my own house so it's only about five minutes away and I remember um, as soon as my name got called, I kind of knew what their reaction be would be. And um, as I was driving home, my mum was trying to ring me and ring me, but 
I just wanted to wait that extra three minutes just to see him in person. And then, yeah, when I walked through the door, they were just ecstatic. And then they definitely they recorded their reaction. And by the signs of it, they couldn't be more prouder. So I think for me personally, I give the reason, I think, motive behind, behind most people is to kind of give back to what their family's done for them throughout the whole years they've been playing the game. So just to see their reaction, to see how proud they was, was a, a very nice moment. Oh, four years ago, like I was saying I was, I think I was just probably starting to get into the mix with Dragons. I say four years ago, it wasn't. I was still a kind of academy player. I made a, probably a couple of games, and I remember watching Wayno because he's two years above me, and thinking like how amazing that is that someone that I know and I was in school with is playing in a World Cup that. I can actually, if I keep like pushing myself and focusing on where I want to be, I can be myself. So, yeah, I think that was the main thing is just keep enjoying what I do every day and just let everything fall into place. We had not too many people me given Wales a chance in this World Cup, but we saw it in 2011, 2015 and 2019. Wales peaking at the right time and surprising people. Is there a feeling within the group? I think obviously... With rugby, there's there's ups and there's downs, but I think the main thing with this group is, even though there will be a lot of mistakes, it's not like we're just pushing them all to the side. We focus every week. We're trying to push ourselves by the fact that if you've seen all the training, even though it's, it's, it seems so little that we're just getting beasted and running, but it's such a big part of the game that we can kind of focus on. And I think that for us personally as a group, that even though... The, from outside they probably write us off it's just trying to keep that tight knit group as I've talked about saying how we've been sticking together and playing together and then just taking that into the games and then when you want to play for each other I think that can you can see that in the performances then when we obviously put the work in and put the graft in and then when you're playing for the man next to you then the results should take us uh, take its place Where was the being the underdog? I think personally it's, it's, it's more of a factor of Every, I'd, in rugby everyone's going to be an underdog everyone has a different opinion so it's more of trying not to take that outside pressure because I think that's that's what probably as you saw not so long ago with all the stuff with the like Wales the rugby and in the Six Nations all that stuff it's not trying to take that out of pressure and put it, put it on ourselves because like you said we're a pretty young group and if we kind of take that pressure and put it on ourselves it's not going to help any of us so it's more of the staying tight together in our own little circle and just trying to push ourselves to try and give the results that we want to give to our fans Real, I thought the yellow card was really unlucky on Saturday when you're sitting in the players tunnel on your own no one's allowed to go near you you're sitting there thinking oh my god that could be my my chance to impress John and then when you got back onto the pitch you seemed extra determined was that fair? Yeah, definitely. I think it was more of in the moment I I didn't know what was going on and then you had a few of the boys trying to reassure me that it was going to be all right. But in the end, it was a penalty try in the yellow card. And I think walking walking off in front of all the fans and obviously the pressure of the selection coming up on the Monday, I, I think definitely sat on that chair. I was looking up at myself on the camera thinking I probably just butchered my chance. I'm going to cost the team now it's, it's like every, all the pressure's back on me so I, I, I made sure that when I came back on then I I put my all into it it's, it's not like I wanted to take the back, uh, back step I wanted to make sure I give 110% because it's my fault that I got the yellow card not the team's fault so the only way I can kind of make sure that I can give back is just giving, giving them all yeah, certainly did. The only other question I'm not sure you and Louis are the same age did you Played together in the 20s, he finished pretty early, didn't he? Yeah, oh, so he's year yeah. below me, yeah. Yeah, so he's year below me. But I think he played with a, a few of the boys. I don't know who, but in South Africa, under-18s, I think he, he played with a few boys here. So, yeah, most of us have played together. But it's nice being around that same age because I think if you're probably in an environment where everyone's older, you can feel a little bit belittled and under, under, the, under the thumb a bit. But, no, it is a, it's a good thing. Thank you. It's so sorry the bad hand in that. you were now checked by Warren after the game on Saturday, so what you has had a good game. <clears throat> how much how important do you think you coming off out of the out of the bin and sort of putting your best foot forward affected of that selection this morning in terms of that seven to finish around the minute morning played on Saturday? Yeah, I think um personally it's 
it's like just don't don't try and take that out of negativity into my game I think I could have easily just had the yellow card and threw, threw my toys out the pram and just put my head under the shed and just thought oh well it is what it is like it's done now but I think it's more of that I want I want to go out there I want to impress I want to make sure that everyone can see that I'm I'm putting that effort in I'm not there to just try and just make the numbers or just wear the jersey and be happy with that I'm there I'm trying to push myself on even further and to try and wear it and get to kind of the achievements that some of the boys have here so I think that yellow card is probably a moment for me where I personally obviously wearing the Welsh jersey I've had probably what I think one yellow card for Dragons and it was the same kind of thing but I think sat sitting on that chair in front of your home crowd under the pump as it is I think especially knowing what was around the corner you've been training for 14 weeks that was a big pressure like point for me and going back into the change room and seeing the coaches there I think it's kind of like embarrassing for me so I made sure that I kept my composure I know what I've been training for I know we've been training for 14 weeks so it's just making sure I take my time and just go out there and give it my all have fun and yeah that was the main thing I thought so Warren, Warren mentioned this morning that selected an extra back three player instead of the third scrum half uh, in terms of the starting team do you see that as a positive for you in terms of that there's more back three so there's maybe the starting team in, in terms of the back three is sort of wide open in terms of who starts it? Um, yeah I think obviously it's it's a shame how they can they went with two and three. Obviously, someone has to miss out. But for me, preferably, it's, I think all of us back three, we have a good bond and we all want to push each other. We all help each other throughout training. So I think having that kind of tight-knit group as we are, we all have different attributes and different parts of the game. So we can all learn off each other. So I think taking that into the World Cup especially and kind of you, you see... So Josh now, who's been there and done it and obviously played very well, is kind of taking what he's done, see how he puts himself into the graft and then seeing how you can kind of create what he'd done back in 2019 because his performance is so good. So I think having that kind of wider back three with the obviously experience that comes with it is a, is a good thing for us younger players especially. So, yeah, I think that's a good thing. Coming back on... Uh, and you know, going the full empty against the, the world champions, it seemed to be a tough game. But how did you feel at the end of it, fitness wise, and where do you think the, those levels are going into the World Cup? So it's fitness, all that. Yeah, just generally fitness and you know, getting ready to, to play. Yeah, I think fitness wise, probably the fittest I've personally felt because I don't think I've ever done so much or been beasted as hard as I have in the whole of my rugby career and I think every day you probably think it's going to be a nice session but it turns out to be one of the worst sessions that you've ever done but so I think going into the games and when you are getting to that the last stages I think some teams probably go for that 60 minutes and then you have the teams that are obviously at the top of their game that when they get to that 60 minutes they don't hold off they just keep pushing so I think that's that kind of bracket we're trying to get to is that when we get to that last 20 minutes of a game that we don't really drop off we just kind of keep pushing keep putting the pressure on the team so um, I think the fitness could kind of take care of itself and then it's obviously mixing that with the rugby that comes with it and then once you get that kind of balance then it's going to be a real stress for other teams so the next three weeks are probably all about sharpening up now aren't they? yeah so obviously it's taken about these these three games now which we've had take a lot of nitpickings that each one of us has probably learned throughout the games and then fine tuning that throughout the weeks now before we actually uh, go into the World Cup and what about Fiji? I mean, uh, they're going to play Super Summit Rugby, I guess, and, and throw a lot of that. That might suit the likes of you or Josh or, or someone with a bit more space around that. Yeah, obviously they play more more open and freely, but obviously they're still a threat. And you, you, you can see some of the superstars they have on their team, but it's a team that obviously are respected throughout the, the rugby community. But I think that kind of open free play is what I, I love and... I think everyone loves really, so it's more of not trying to fall into their open free game because that's what they probably they want. They don't really want structure and and uh, going to corners and stuff. They probably do want that more open play because for the players that they have in their squad, it, it does suit them. So um, it's more of just trying to fine tune and look at. We'll take and basically review for that game now 
and seeing what we can do ourselves to kind of put the pressure back on them. But I think the open and free game is probably nice for a lot of us Black Street players because we love Did the space. Did you play Fiji on the 20 World Cup for there, um, I didn't play in that game, but a few. I think I remember Darry. Darry played in that game. I think he was the captain, maybe, for that game. But I remember watching it. Great. Go on, final question then. Uh, do you have any favourite World Cup memories? The moments one that you watched on TV, but yeah, I want to be a part of that. I think um, I've always said about the 2019 World Cup, uh, New Zealand and the France, the game. I remember watching that, and then. Obviously, South Africa, England in the final, and then Chesson scoring that final try in the corner. I think I remember that was, I remember I, I've mentioned that I was in hostel for them for those couple of days and in the hostel watching that, that final try and just thinking how probably special of a, an occasion that was for them and just seeing the passion behind it. And that's why yeah, everyone plays rugby is for that kind of emotional and that passion that we get from all the tough times. So I think that was the. Uh, Probably the highlight moments for me is as a World Cup uh, memory. What were you in hospital for? Oh, I just cut my hand, so they had to stitch it up, and they just kept me in for a few days. A injury? Or? Oh no no no! This is not <laughs> no, it's just a new normal school injury. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Perfect.